a very angry Joe Rogan on one of the latest episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience podcast where Joe came out and, well, if you thought this guy was a conservative, I mean, he made every single attempt he could to show you that he is not. But why all the anger? Joe, we'll talk about it. Guys, here in less than 10 seconds, stick with me first. If you could, if YT lets you, try and hit that like button for me. Also, very important, you please share the video, hit the bell, subscribe, and wear the glasses because I'm blind. And if you guys can make a generous donation to my ministry and help support, see more information in the description. So Joe Rogan, wow. I mean, this was, um, well, I mean, I guess for those that looked at Rogan as, you know, this sort of conservative, you know, type of a, a voice. Well, you were very, um, you were very let down by this. This is why I always say, don't trust politicians or celebrities or any of these people. Okay. You just can't. Joe Rogan has a big issue here. And I'm not just talking about the fact that this guy has now come out and has just defended rainbow marriage. And I'll get to that in a second, but the bigger problem that he has is that he is without Jesus. That is the bigger problem that he has here, okay? All the profanity and everything that he, you know, spouted off here in this in this rant that he did uh, and the and the anger and all of that and you know, his stance, political party, all that. Look, the guy needs Jesus. He needs a savior. And a lot of times in society today we can applaud people like him who, you know, came under fire for a lot of things that he has said and, and, and censorship issues and all of that, you know, and look at him as like, oh, this is our savior. This is our voice. But we forget that Jesus is our voice. Jesus is our savior, not these people. And this is what I talk about all the time when I say you're going to be let down. At some point, you'll be let down by these entertainers or these politicians. Here you go, Joe Rogan. So what did he have to say? Well, it was on the Saturday episode, July 23rd, of his Joe Rogan Experience podcast, where the subject of rainbow marriage came up, and he defended it. I mean, just completely sold out for the rainbow here in this statement, and called Republicans who oppose it a bunch of, you know, you know what, phobics because of it. And he said, how dare they not support it? And he talked about the fact that this is important to these couples. This is them trying to express their love towards one another. And what are Republicans trying to do? They're trying to just completely rip it apart, take it apart at the seams. Why would they do such a thing? And he's referring to the bill right now that the House just passed. And I talked about that in a previous video about you know, how they're trying to codify rainbow marriage into law because they're worried that the Supreme Court might overturn it because, well, you've had Justice Clarence Thomas even allude to it already in the past. And that was brought up here by Rogan. And he called out specifically uh, Senator Marco Rubio because Marco Rubio was asked if he would support the bill if it came to the Senate. And Rubio dismissed it and said that he thinks it's one of the most ridiculous, you know, you know, bills that he had ever seen. The fact that, you know, he said, look, the court already made their decision. They already enshrined it in law. We're wasting our time with this. And I think that, you know, a lot of them are saying that because they just, they don't really want to give like a, a straight answer one way or another. I, I think if the bill did come to the Senate, I do think Marco Rubio would vote no on that. Uh, however, I don't think that a Mitt Romney would because Mitt Romney has already kind of hinted that he would vote yes to codify that. Yes, Mr. Good Mormon out there in Utah. So uh, Rogan took his shots here at, at Rubio and said, you know, they're, he's like, I think they just want us to fight. This is just giving us more reason to fight. I mean, this guy sounded like a leftist. I mean, out and out. I mean, and then he even said this, when it comes to a lot of, bleep i am a bleeding heart liberal well good i'm glad that rogan is coming out and making a defiant you know stance on where he is that's good we need more people to actually do that i don't even care so much if the guy is coming out and saying that he's not a conservative i never put any trust in him to begin with so for me i wasn't let down at all 
This is this was definitely not something that shocked me, took me off guard. Like, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? Joe Rogan has defended rainbow marriage. Despite the fact that he has been criticized and tossed around in the media, you know, everywhere, all this stuff. He said that it's the type of bleepity bleep like this with these rainbow marriage bills and the stuff with Roe that makes me as far away from being a Republican as you can imagine. He says, I've never been one. I don't plan on being one. Rogan defended Roe, the rainbow, all of it. And again, all throughout the entire duration of this rant, filled with profanity, just a bunch of anger. And again, you can't be surprised, right? Rogan had opportunities to fight back even more when it came to him caving on many things and bending the knee to the woke activists out there or the uh, the woke activists, as I like to call them, showed his true colors. He's just being good and obedient. At the end of the day, he's, he's just like the rest of them. But it goes back to my main point here. He can try and be virtuous, virtue signal to the rainbow community and say that I'm going to defend you. I'm going to support your right to be married. But at the end of the day, this man is without a savior and he's lost and he needs Jesus. If that bill were to come to the Senate, I don't know 100% whether or not it would pass or not. Already a lot of Republicans have hinted that they would vote yes to codify. And I even said that if the court even took the case up again, how many states would even ban it after seven years? It's a lot different when it comes to the marriage thing than it did to the Roe thing, right? Way more states are willing to defend, you know, little people than they are when it comes to rainbow marriage. And I've said this before, everything that happened in 2015 with, with the whole rainbow deal with marriage, what did it do? That kick-started everything that you see happening now when it comes to the drag stuff and the kids in the schools and all of this. That was the launching pad. Now, so many people, especially Republicans, have been desensitized to it all. Yes, lawmakers who sit as Republicans in state houses would take a look if given the opportunity and say, oh, they're not hurting anybody. Let them keep getting married. Who cares? Even if the court did overturn it, would it even matter? Would it even matter? And that would be an indictment on those individual states and the country because God would look at it and say, okay, here's your chance. Let's see if you do the right thing now. How many states would do it? I think less than 10, maybe even less than five. That's just me. You guys can let me know your thoughts here on Joe Rogan uh, and everything he had to say. Also, if you enjoyed my daily content talking about end time Bible prophecy headlines and you want to help support my ministry with generous donation, click the link to my PayPal down below or sign up on my Patreon for five bucks a month. When you do, you'll be alerted for all the content I put out. If you guys only watch my videos through YT Alerts, you're going to miss a ton of my content because they barely send them anymore. You guys always tell me. Plus, you guys can leave your comments over on Patreon completely censorship-free and send direct messages. All the links are down below. Big, big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity greatly appreciated. But I'm not done just yet. I don't leave any video here without giving people the opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I talked about this with Joe Rogan, he needs a savior. If anybody watching right now, if you have not accepted Christ into your life, I wanna lead you in a prayer right now to do just that. This is a prayer you can do in your own words, but I will give you the steps that you need to bring it before the Lord today. The first thing that you wanna do right off the top, acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are, but I'll tell you the good news. God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. He died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. Repent means to turn from your sin, not just to say you're sorry, but to turn from lifestyles, habits, anything in your life that goes against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and you ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away, 
and the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. I pray you make that decision today. I'll have more on this down below. As I mentioned, you can let me know your thoughts. Don't forget the links to donate to our ministry are there as well. It is a great blessing if you could help us out. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you, and I'll talk with you soon.